so yeah, Poland has had a rough uh, few uh, centuries, and in Kaiserreich, Poland is hardly doing that well. We start off ruled by a German king, uh, King August IV, who isn't exactly the most popular in the country for uh, certain reasons. Starting out, we also have issues with the German and Austrian control of our economy, causing a lot of inequality and polarization in our nation, giving us some very nasty debuffs to deal with. Hey, but at least the army's okay. We even have Guderian himself and his attaché to lead our troops. Now, in this update, Poland has gotten a very big rework with its focus tree. Now, as you can see, like, there's a lot of options for different political routes ranging across the political spectrum, from your crazy far-left LARP to your boring centrist RP, and back to your crazy far-right LARP. And of course, since it's OI4, we have to play as one of the political extremist paths since they have the most interesting playthroughs. But already, as you can looking through this tree, you can already see that there is a decent amount of replayability in just this nation itself. Since we are reliant on the German economy, when Black Monday hits us, it hits us hard. And we have to pivot into doing our Black Monday recovery part of the tree. Now, the way you handle your recovery will affect the popularity of the poli other political parties, determining who will win the upcoming 1938 elections. So, since I want to go with the Nationalists in this playthrough, I want to choose stuff that weakens the Republicans and the Socialists and strengthens the Nationalists. Also, while we recover, we want to do decisions that take control of our economy from the Germans and Austrians to make it better for the Polish people and make us more independent. You see, we don't only influence the politics of our nation through how we fix the economy. We also influence people through the use of the deep state. Now, we can use our intelligence agencies to crack down on the organizations we don't like so the people that we do like do a lot better. Now, after a year of going tough on the left-wing organizations and being more uh, lenient on the right-wing ones, we did a good job taking care of the unwanted radicalism in the country, securing valuable political allies to benefit the nation, and also getting the nationalists prepared to sweep the nation with a landslide in the next election. Poised to win the election, there were premature celebrations amongst those in the nationalist circles, but then came a great shock when instead of getting the landslide election they expected, the king decided to override the will of the people and appoint Studniki to maintain his control of Poland. This of course made many in Poland very mad and they started organizing and planning their takeover of this illegitimate government. In a bid to win over some people, the Studniki government negotiated with the Austrians and Germans to allow more economic autonomy for Poland. This was a very popular move for the government and gave them the influence they needed to crush the socialist organizers, but the nationalists were proving too popular and too powerful to deal with, and the nationalists were very tired of this German tyranny. Despite the political instability, the worst of Black Monday was behind us, and I could focus on building up my nation for war. Things were heating up around the world, with the Austrians uniting and centralizing their empire. The American government capitulated, leaving the rebelling factions to fight for control over the nation and the Italian factions remained deadlocked in a fight over who should control the peninsula. Fortunately, the Polish had a plan on how to fight this upcoming war. Poland has a large choice of very good political advisors to help with all sorts of needs you're going to need in the game. We also have a very good range of competent generals to lead our army to victory on the battlefield. In this war, I knew armor would be a key tool for victory, so I had the boys in the lab whip up some designs. This light tank would be used in a recon role, and we made sure it was very cheap and gave us entrenchment so we could defend better on the battlefield. The medium tank though, this would be very helpful for us getting breakthroughs, and since the AI doesn't like to build AT, would make it so divisions that have it won't take as much damage in combat since they won't get pierced. 
Now, this was a major accomplishment for Polish engineering, and I had to give it the most Polish name I could think of, so people knew where it was from. Soon, that imminent war arrived, with Russia declaring upon the Eastern European states to reclaim its lost land from World War I. I had enough time to finalize the army templates I was going to use for the war, and now you may be wondering why I'm using cavalry only, and that's because the army tree in the mod gives a few interesting bonuses to cavalry, pretty much incentivizing you to just use that in your army, and with mobile warfare doctrine, you can give that cavalry a lot of extra org and speed. With Germany at war, the Nationalists saw their opportunity to strike, and we overthrew our German overlords. The army had long prepared for this day, and now it was here. We could now also start progressing down the National Populist part of the focus tree. But later focuses required control for Poznan, so I had to work fast to get those focuses done before the missions ran out, and presumably fail stating me. Now, in, also, in the chaos of the rebellion, an opportunist faction tried to coup me, but they were easily shut down. Before the Germans had a proper chance to set up against me, I made a move against them and was able to surround several German divisions in Upper Silesia. But, unfortunately, I was not able to enjoy this victory for very long because the fall of Munich happened, which caused the Austrians to join the German faction, and now I had to deal with the Austrian front. Still, it's not like the AI was uh, super prepared to invade me, so was able to set up a front line against them. With the south secured though, I could now continue my advance to Poznan, and with my cavalry easily swept in and took the city. Now, I felt good about stabilizing my front lines, but then I looked in the west, and I could see things were pretty up in the air of who was winning that front. Despite being hopelessly unnumbered, I was still capable of making small offensives to do damage against the Germans. When the Germans tried to do an attack to cut off Poznan from the rest of Poland, I was able to counterattack to cut off the attacking divisions, and... <laughs> what a surprise. And even in this timeline, Paulus can't escape being encircled. I had held Poznan long enough to finish the focus to purge any disloyal generals, but... I didn't read that carefully, so I accidentally purged a general in charge of uh, all my troops. Now, in my defense, I play this mod to lead, not to read. But soon, with very little challenge, I was able to finish the other important mission, securing loyalty to my government. And with those missions done, I figured now was the time for Poland to start making more ambitious plays. finally felt like progress was being made after so much fighting, and I saw some good news with the Kingdom of Ukraine finally capitulating. 
With less forces to deal with on the Eastern Front, I made an offensive towards Lithuania and even managed to capitulate them as well, but then the German faction just dumped a bunch of troops there, pretty much forcing me to fall back. It started to feel like things were about to stalemate again, but then I noticed something huge. The Russian AI managed to successfully land a large naval invasion in northwest Germany, and were rapidly pushing into the country. Uh, I was amazed. Uh, I rushed to join up with their lines, and we started to move together to push down south to deliver a killing blow to Germany and start to go into Austrian territory. But unfortunately, this cooperation didn't last too long since the Russians just declared war on us. Now, it might have something to do with me doing the Unity of Western Slavs focus, making me leave their faction and striving to form my own Slavic Union, which goes directly against Russia's interests, but still pretty rude to do that when I have troops in their territory. So we were caught completely off guard and our armies were overextended, so some troops were in a fight for their lives to return home. Things were looking pretty bad for Poland, and I wasn't sure what to do. In the desperate act to win on one front at least, I noticed the Austrian front was kind of thin, so I rushed cavalry through the southern front into Austria to type a VP snipe them and make them capitulate to me. It didn't work, and the Austrians quickly responded to my snakes and I was forced back to Slovakia. It only got worse with the Russian invasion of Danzig. I tried desperately to hold them back, but I had too few units to stop the wave of Russians coming from the north. My lines were completely broken by the offensive, and my enemies were rapidly approaching Warsaw. I desperately tried to save my remaining units and pull back to the original starting position when I first started this war for independence. This was the end for Poland. Surrounded by enemies who greatly outnumbered them, no friends to reach out to, and even cut off from the ability to trade with neutral nations, there was no hope for Poland to ever achieve its dream of unifying the Western Slavs. And so, I decided to just end the game here. For those who made it this far, thank you a lot for watching. The reception to these videos is so great and it really makes me want to keep making more. So make sure you subscribe to see my next upload. Also, if you don't know, I, uh, I stream on Twitch, which is linked in the description, and you can watch me live there. Uh, and thank you all for your time and have a great day.